glorified your name to be lifted up oh lord we should oh lord we want we want we should decrease and you should increase in our lives oh lord we give the remaining part of the prayer meeting into your most holy hands in jesus name we pray amen amen and amen hallelujah once again we are very glad to be in the presence of the lord together and worship him with all of our heart the bible says that we are all precious in his sight you know yes. precious uh, you know he says even as high as the heavens are from the earth so great is his love for each one of us never feel yourself discarded whoever you are because sometimes the enemy will put all negative thoughts into your mind that you're no good but the lord said you're very precious to me i have engraved you in the palm of my hands and no one can snatch you from my hands if you only believe you know his word is true hallelujah and also he says here he says uh, uh, he's our keeper and how precious are his thoughts towards us you know uh, in uh, the psalms uh, he's uh, the lord tells us how precious are his thoughts towards us how great is the sum of them we are unable to enumerate you know that it's like the sands of the sea we only believe if we start counting our blessings you know we will know how greatly the lord has blessed us and how very closely you know he uh, he nurtures us he looks after us so we we'll give this time in worship even as we have taken this song you are my strength when i am in truly when we are weak you know we will see his strength truly when we are in need he comes you know he is always there 24 by 7 he is with us but we know that his presence we, we can never ignore his presence and we we will just worship him even as we sing this song okay you are my strength when i am weak you are the treasure that i my own in all Seeking you as a precious jewel, Lord, to give up I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus, Lamb of God, what is your name? Taking my sin, my cross, my shame, rising again, I bless your name. You are my all in all. When I fall down, you pick me up. When I am dry, you fill my cup. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Lord, you alone are worthy, Lord God, of all honor and glory and adoration and power and thanksgiving, Lord God. Hallelujah! 
you have redeemed us, Lord. Lord, you left your heavenly glory, Lord. You came down to us, Lord God, only because you love us so much, Lord. You didn't leave us to ourselves as orphans, Lord, but you came to us, Lord God. You became flesh, Lord. Hallelujah. And lived amongst us, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for the great sacrifice. We are not worthy, Lord God, but you have made us worthy to come into your holy presence, Lord. And we want to give you thanks and praise, Lord. Anoint our ears, Lord. Anoint our hearts, Lord God. That truly, Lord God, we would listen to your voice daily, Lord God. Lord, that we would not be where we are, Lord God, but we would progress in you. We go deeper in love with you. That we would walk after Lord, we follow after you, Lord God. Draw us, Lord, that we would run after you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for each one of us, Lord God, that you have brought, Lord God, once again, Lord, into your presence, that you have been our shield, you have been our protector, you have taken care of us, Lord, you have provided all of our needs, Lord. We want to give you glory, honor, and praise. Lord, we give the remaining time into your mighty hands, Lord. Speak to us, Holy Spirit of God. Lord, that your word would begin to take greater shape in our lives, Lord. Hallelujah. Fill us, Lord, and empower us, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, uh, we resume our uh, study of the word. And it's very important for us to know the word of God because the word of God will help us, you know, know the Lord better. and. Uh, through his word, we are able to love him more. The more we know about a person, you know, when you are friendly with a person, okay, you want to be with that person more often, you know, because you want to know that person more. So the same thing in, in his word, the more we meditate on his word, the more we are knowing the Lord, we know how we have to worship him, how we have to, what he expects of us, okay? Last time you were seeing in uh, chapter 12 of John, that the Lord says that he, he says, little while, a little while is the light with you. Walk in the light. Now, he's the light of the world. And no one, no one can give us, you know, what he has given us because he's our maker, okay? And he knows the best for us. He has the best plan for us. And it says here, walk in the right light while the light is with you. So now when we know that the Lord Jesus is with us, we will not walk in darkness. We will walk completely submitted to him. You know, because uh, if we walk in darkness, we are, we are not uh, following the light, okay? It is very clear. We either are in the light or we are in darkness. When we receive Jesus, when we repent and we invite Jesus into our lives, we have been transported from darkness into his marvelous light. And it's a free gift. You know, salvation is a free gift. That's the greatest part of all. He has paid the price and he has given us that free gift. And he says, while you have the light, believe in the light. Now he's telling us, you know, in so many uh, you know, ways, right through the gospels, we see the Lord saying, believe, believe, believe. When you believe, you will see the glory of the Lord. When you believe, you will be saved. When you believe, you will see the power of God, you know, in your life. Okay, so then we see that many people, you know, believed on him. But there were many people who did not believe their hearts were hardened. Now, let us never be in that place where our hearts are hardened and we don't allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us. You know, when the Lord is speaking to us, we need to open our ears and, you know, obey his voice. You know, we can just reject his voice. Every day that when the voice of the Lord comes to us, you know, we need to obey that voice and walk in that narrow path. That means dying to self. There's a death involved. You know, dying to our flesh life. Hallelujah. You know, and then it's, uh, we were told that the, uh, many of the chief rulers, many of the people believed in him, but they were afraid to confess their faith. Let it not be that we are afraid at any point of time to confess the Lord Jesus. And we are told they love the praise of man rather than the praise of God. Now, who is going to take us into heaven? It is the Lord Jesus himself. So we are not going to be men pleasers. We are going to be God pleasers because in pleasing the Lord, we are going to see victory in our lives. We are going to see here in our life, abundant life and in the life to come eternal life. Okay, now we go to chapter 13. 
And it's a beautiful time. And Jesus actually is now nearing his death. Okay, he knows. And it is all about timing, you know. Our lives are all about timing. And now Jesus is telling, it is said here, um, uh, chapter 13. And uh, Shania will read us uh, the first three verses. John chapter 13, 1, 2, and 3. John chapter 13, 1, 2, and 3. Hello. Uh, how, am I audible? Yes, yes. Yes. Jesus washes the disciples' feet. It was before the feast of the Passover, Jesus realized that his hour has, had come to pass from this world to the Father. Having always loved those who were his own in the world, he loved them to the end. They were at supper and the devil had already put in the mind of Judas, Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray him. Jesus, knowing that the father had entrusted all things to him and as he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, removed his outer garment and taking a towel, wrapped it around his waist. Yeah, and then he, poured water, then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel he was wearing. Yes, yeah. So now we are told that uh, it was a feast of the Passover. See, because Jesus is a Passover lamb and it was all about timing. It's told to us here that before the feast, of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come because it's all about his timing. He was he was in perfect timing. You know, he he whatever he did, he did in perfect time. Like he was a Passover lamb. We know that you know the first Passover happened about two or three thousand years before Jesus came in the flesh. Okay, we know that Moses, you know, uh, uh, tells the children of Israel according to the instruction of the Lord to, you know, take a Passover lamb, kill the Passover lamb, take that blood, you know, the blood of the lamb and, and uh, apply it on the lintels and the doorpost. And the angel of death would be passing over Egypt. And whichever house did not have that, you know, blood, the firstborn of man and beast died that day, you know, that night. So it, now it is you know, now uh, there were many uh, uh, centuries later. Now Jesus is here, and he is the Passover Lamb. He is a you know it is not by the blood of goats and bulls. The Bible says that he has purchased us, but he has purchased us with his own precious blood. So now it says here, it was a feast to the Passover, and Jesus knew his hour was come that he should depart out of this world. And go to the Father. Having loved this God, he loved them to the end. You and I are loved so greatly, so passionately by the Lord. He loves us to the point of death. Okay, no one uh, has died for any, you know, uh, no person would uh, sacrifice himself for another. But Jesus, the God of heaven and earth, because of our sin, did it so that we would have life. And we are told here, when supper being ended, you know, we know that uh, this is the last supper, this is a narration of the last supper, the last supper that Jesus was having among his disciples. He was having uh, this time with his disciples, and they had just finished the supper, and the devil having now put in the heart of Judas Iscariot, you know, Judas, you know, was with the Lord Jesus all the time, like all of the disciples. Judas also was with the Lord, the 12, the 12 uh, apostles, including Judas. Now, when Jesus went, you know, choosing his uh, apostles, he chose Judas, though, you know, and he fully knew that Judas is going to betray him because Jesus knows the end from the beginning. Our lives also, the Lord knows right, the, you know, right now, he knows everything, you know, everything that is transpiring in our hearts, everything, you know, about us. He knows the end from the beginning. So the, 
the, the best person to depend upon is the Lord Jesus himself because he knows us inside out. He's our creator. He's our maker. Okay. And Judas was with Jesus like the other apostles. He went about on the missionary trips. He saw the great miracles that Jesus did. He ate with Jesus. He listened to his, the word of uh, Jesus. Everything. But his heart was far away. You know? Uh, it's a very pathetic thing. He was so close to Jesus, who is the savior of the world, but he lost his life entirely. Today, he's nowhere other than in the lake of fire. He's, he's destined for hell. Okay, because he betrayed Jesus. But Jesus gave him time and again opportunity to repent. Jesus had given him the money box. You know, he was the one who handled all of the finances of Jesus. He handled the finances of Jesus. And Jesus gave him time and again opportunity to repent. But the man kept on doing sin, you know, you know, taking out of that, thieving out of that, you know, taking that money. He was not a person who loved the Lord Jesus. He loved money above Jesus. Okay, so he was there. You know, he may have begun properly, but later on in life, something went wrong with his, you know, with his uh, understanding, and he disregarded Jesus. Yeah, and here we are told that Jesus uh, knew that he was going to betray him. Okay, and Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his his hands, and that he was. He has come from God and would be going to God. Now, Jesus was completely aware from where he has come and that he is going back to God. And he, in many, many terms, he told the disciples that, you know, that he is going back. He is going to be, you know, uh, taken by sinful men and be put to death. But the disciples didn't understand what he was saying. They just, you know, it just went over them. They didn't understand that the Messiah, because they didn't think that the Messiah is going to suffer death. You know, they thought the Messiah is going to come and liberate them, you know, from uh, the, the Roman oppression because they were under the Roman government. So they were thinking when Jesus said about his death, that he would be taken by sinful men and put to death, they, they, they just did not understand it. And then it says here, Jesus did something very, very special and very spectacular, which we need to learn. You know, it's a very, very great thing he did. And he rises from supper. We are told that he, after supper was over, he rises up from supper and he takes out his outer garment and ties a towel around himself. And he, he takes a basin of water and goes down to his disciples. Can you imagine? We saw earlier how Jesus entered into Jerusalem on a donkey. Okay, that was a very humiliating thing. But our king came on a donkey. And now here our king is washing the feet of the disciples. You know, he, uh, you know, uh, he's teaching us humility, you know, to such a high level. Now, he being God, he's washing the disciples' feet. There's something that, you know, it, it was uh, something out of the blue, uh, something that uh, no one would have imagined. None of those 12 apostles would have imagined. And then he comes to Simon Peter. Simon Peter is a very vocal person. The moment Jesus, now when he saw this happening, he must have been shocked. How can my God, my Lord, do such a thing? Is this something, you know, today's, in today's world, a leader expects his followers to take care of him, you know? And they will sit on a high horse. They will sit on, you know, uh, they demand uh, great things out of those who are following them. But here is Jesus stooping down to the level of washing the disciples' feet. Now, you know, our feet, you now we may have a bath. We are clean when we have a bath. But, but our feet, when we go about with our work, our feet gets dirty. The same way with, a, uh, with us. We are washed by the blood of Jesus. But our feet, our walk, you know, we need to understand that our daily walk is so important in God's sight. And we do many things that are not pleasing in the Lord's sight. We need to come and come before him and say, Lord, I need you, Lord. Wash me, Lord God. Our feet is our walk. It speaks about our walk in this world. Okay, Because there will be jealousy, there will be pride, there will be anger, there will be uh, animosity, there will be all sorts of things in our life. Okay, And then when he comes to Peter, Peter says unto him, Lord, you are coming to wash my feet? And Jesus says, yes. What I do now, 
you may not understand, but you will understand it later. That's what Jesus was telling them. You know, because it was something, uh, something that they just could not comprehend, or something that they just could not understand, that our Lord is stooping down and washing the feet. So then Jesus says, you shall never wash my feet. He just told Jesus, no, you're not going to do that. You know, because he was such a vocal person, he spoke his heart. And Jesus answered, if I do not wash you, you have no part with me. You know, the moment Jesus said that, Peter understood that, that he has to allow Jesus to wash his feet. Our salvation is only in the name of Jesus. We ought to humble ourselves and come to our Savior and allow him to wash us thoroughly. You know, and how do we get washed by the blood of Jesus? By just repenting, you know, what, wherever we see our lives not right. He's faithful and just to forgive us of all our sins. And then Peter says, says he's, he says something very, very, uh, you know, spontaneously. He says, Lord, don't only wash my feet, wash my hands and wash my head as well. You know, because uh, he says, I, I want you thoroughly to wash me. And what does Jesus say? He, he that is washed needs not but to wash his feet. But he's clean in every way. Get you you are clean, but not all. Now, Jesus was saying, now, when I wash you, you're actually washed. You and I are thoroughly washed by the blood of Jesus. Those who believe Jesus, those who have repented and invited Jesus into our, li into our lives, we are brand new. But we see that there are certain things in our lives that are not pleasing in God's sight. So we come to the Lord and ask him for forgiveness each day. Each day we need to remember, you know, Lord, my day, Lord, I have done this, 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 Lord. Forgive me, Lord. I have not uh, walked in love, Lord. You know, whatever is our sin, we just confess it before the Lord. And then Jesus says, not all of you are clean. Because he knew that Judas, out of all of the 12, was planning something in his heart. Now, if you analyze this entire thing about Judas, Judas and Jesus' relationship, now Jesus and the, uh, the other 11 apostles had a relationship going on. You know, they were close to each other. They loved each other. They were, uh, you know, and uh, they obeyed the voice of the Lord. But Judas, his heart was far away from the Lord. His heart was not tuned. He didn't have a relationship. And, uh, you know, all along, Judas, you know, when he, uh, he had been very, very, uh, what do you say, as a thief, you know, stealing the money out of the box. But not once the Lord opened it out in the presence of any one of his the apostles. He, he gave him opportunity to repent. And none of the apostles knew, even when Jesus was saying all this, none of the apostles knew that this is the man who is, you know, uh, who is unclean. And verse 11 says, for he knew who should betray him. Therefore, he said, you are not all clean. So after he had washed their feet and had taken his garment and was set down, he said, know you what I have done to you? You call me master and Lord, and you say, well, for so am I. If then I be your Lord and master and wash your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. For I've given you an example that you should do it as I have, you should do as I have done. So what, now Jesus is explaining why he had done. Now he doesn't mean, you know, the reason, uh, now Jesus is giving, you know, very, very valid reason. He says, see, you are all surprised by what I do because I'm your Lord and I'm, uh, I'm uh, your master. And, uh, you know, uh, and so it is, but, uh, and this is what I'm doing because I want you to um, use this as an example, means in serving one another. You know, it doesn't mean that I have to go around washing everyone's feet. You know, those who are with me, or my, my brothers and sisters around, doesn't mean I have to go and wash, wash their feet. What the Lord is saying is, you need to serve one another. You need to love one another. You need to sacrifice for one another. You need to, uh, you know, uh, Forgive one another. You need to be merciful to one another. That's what the Lord is calling from, you know, or each one of us. He says that I being Lord have washed your feet. 
you need to wash one another's feet. You not you need to you know come to that point of humility when you serve. You know the uh, the higher you you know the the greatest person on earth you can say is Jesus because being God he humbled himself to such an extent. So he's calling us into humility. He's calling us to go the uh, the lower you go the higher you're going to rise. You know when you humble yourself with one another. You know, you will see God lifting, you know, because the Lord detests the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. So when we humble, you know, ourselves before one another, when we serve one another, when we pray for one another, when we are, uh, you know, wishing the uh, best for one another, when we are merciful and forgiving one another, the Lord, you know, does something uh, superb, okay? And, <clears throat> and he says, this is an example, you know, that you... Uh, that you need to serve one another, you need to love one another. Verily, verily, 16th verse, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither is he that is sent greater than he that has sent him. So what he's saying is, now, uh, I being Lord, I'm your servant. You know, it is something, you know, which the human mind cannot understand. You know, he being a master, and Lord comes to such a, a, you know, low position and serves, you know, he being, Lord has become a servant. He has served us. So we need to serve one another. So by example, he's telling us we need to love one another. We need to serve one, one another. If you know these things, happy are you if you do them. It is not only important for us to know, you know, humility in uh, in, uh, you know, uh, right through the Bible, whatever the Lord is uh, teaching us, but we ought to do it. That's what the Lord is saying here. It's not sufficient that you know it. There's no point in that just knowing it in our, in our hearts. We need to follow and, you know, truly love one another. I speak not of all of you. I know whom I've chosen, but that the scripture may be fulfilled. He that eats bread with me has lifted up his heel against me. We know that uh, Judas betrayed the Lord, uh, you know, and for 30 pieces of silver. He was only <coughs> a lover of uh, himself, lover of money, lover of everything apart from the Lord Jesus, okay? So there's uh, where Judas has fallen terribly, but still yeah, he was given an opportunity. You know, you and I are given opportunity daily to come before the Lord and ask him forgiveness. So we end here. And what we have learned from here is we need to serve one another. We need to love one another. We need to be merciful to one another. We need to uh, forgive one another. You know, all that the Lord, you know, himself is, we need to be with one another. You know, that's what the Lord wants us to know. And let us not be like Judas, you know, you know, being with the Lord, being present, you know, for everything concerning the Lord, but our hearts far away from him. Let it not be that way. Let us have a deep relationship, a daily relationship. Let it not be only on a Wednesday. Let it not be only on a Sunday. Let it be a daily walk with the Lord. Okay? So now we leave the floor open. And uh, uh, whoever wants to speak and give a testimony or whatever, Kindly feel free and quickly, okay? Please unmute if anybody wants to speak up. Yeah, yes. While everybody is unmuting, I think I will begin first. And uh, yeah. like everybody knows, last week uh, we were a little disturbed because... Uh, Kabir required his uh, final score for the admission. And uh, just while this prayer meeting was going on, we got a confirmation that uh, his admission was confirmed last Wednesday. And uh, as soon as the prayer meeting was over, we went ahead and uh, we paid for uh, whatever fees. So his admission is completely confirmed and Soon he will be joining college whenever that uh, begins. Secondly, because I also uh, 
work with uh, NGOs and NGOs all across the country. Uh, there was a person who was by the name of uh, Mr. James and he called up asking for a little help. And I normally, whenever I meet people like this, I first give them out one of the prayers to begin with. And uh, that was one of the prayers that uh, he read. And I told him, I said, if you truly want the blessing of your NGO to be successful, trust in the Lord in all his ways and follow mm -hmm. this word. So when he did that, uh, just uh, yesterday, he sent me a message saying that he received one lakh US dollars in his account and is the Lord. early affirm and reaffirm the words of Gita it's not what we want to create a Judas we want to create people like Jesus to be like Simon Peter where mm -hmm. the net was empty the Lord filled his net till the nets broke we want to you know completely be humble towards the Lord to give us what we want but you know be completely surrendering all our needs everything that we want just trust in the Lord and he is our Jehovah he is our Jireh he is the Yahweh who gives us everything amen. that we need all our ways so who's amen. next amen amen anyone else Mr. Yeah, I, I want to yes, uh, see. Uh, I just want to thank the Lord for uh, but the Lord was with me and with my entire family and with with every one of us you know, for the last week. And uh, he was in every every walk of our life and you know, there were so many uh, problems, difficulties, of course it comes in our way. But when we uh, when we, you know, yield everything at the feet of God, he makes a way. Where there's no way, he's the one to make a way. And he made a way and that's how he has given us, given me and given our family members a victory also. So I want to praise and thank the Lord for it. And uh, moreover, even my mom also, by the grace of God, she's keeping very good health. And though she's 85 year old, she always... Uh, you know, she always sings song and she's very close to God. And that's how um, till today, I mean, she's having a very good health also. And it's only by the grace of God that, you know, God has, God gives her the strength. And she's a very prayerful woman also. And she's a prayerful mother, I should say. She prays for every one of us. And that's how God has been hearing us. And that's how we are in this way. You know, we all three of us in a godly, because of a godly parent. And God has, God did give us this godly parents also to, to be, to pray for us. And it's only by, because of their prayers and because of the grace of God that we are in this, in the way of God. You know? So I thank and praise God for it. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Who's next? We've got three minutes more and then we'll go in for Thanksgiving. Amen, yes. Anyone else? Let's not waste time. I just want to confirm, you know, with all these testimonies, that the Lord is so good and He's a God of miracles, He's a God of wonders. We expect great, great things from Him. You know, He's our everlasting Father. So, uh, you know, uh, He's 24 by 7 with us, you know, and whatever we ask in faith is ours. Yeah. And we can ask for big, big, bold prayers we can make. Because our God is a loving God. So, no, I think uh, this is what group we do now. I think we uh, can just. Uh, Esther can sing one song for us and the rest yeah, of us. Sing. Thanks. Yeah, I'll sing one song. <laughs> You'll all yes. can me, no? Yes, yes, yes. Amazing yes. how sweet the sound that saved our life but now. Was great as a power of grace to believe. How precious 
But I can sing one more stanza. Yes, yeah, sing, sing. Okay. The Lord has promised good. 